Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. You will be receiving a stone card like this one. On the card, you'll find an example of a cusp cone, an upper molar, and a bicuspid. And what we'd like you to do is duplicate the cusp cone four times on the little spots where indicated. And on the molar, there are three duplications as there are on the bicuspid. You'll notice that on the first practice exercise, the cusp tip positions are maintained and the reduction is strictly in the center of the occlusal surface. On the bicuspid, similarly, we have the entire occlusal surface and only the buccal surface has been removed. In these last four projects, you'll find the complete reduction of the occlusal surface on the molar, maintaining the axial surfaces for reference, and on the bicuspid, complete axial reduction, maintaining the occlusal for reference. So you see that each exercise is teaching you a different skill. We expect you to work on this assignment outside of class. Your course director and your syllabus will indicate the due date for this assignment. We'd like you to work independently, but you should ask your instructor for help as you progress. All right, let's start with this one now. You'll find when working with these stone cards that overheating the wax a little bit for the first increment will help soak the wax into the surface and give you a base from which to start. Subsequent in increments don't have to be heated that hot. And the idea here is to add wax in careful increments and start flowing it upward into a cusp tip. And hold your instrument carefully. And as the heat goes away from the instrument, you can see that the cusp will build as you go. If you pull too soon, you will leave a warm molten ball of wax that will slump down and will not maintain the cusp tip. And as we lose the heat, we pull the cusp, slump down a little bit there, but that's not a problem because with wax it's very easy to work. And we pull that up and just hold the instrument carefully. And when we see the heat leaving the wax, we pull away. And there's a cusp tip. If you'd like, you can warm your instrument very slightly and just smooth up the sides of that a little bit. There's a cusp tip. To begin, again, we overheat a little bit of wax and just start to flow the wax into the stone so that we have a surface that we can adhere subsequent additions to. The margins of the reduction are quite clear so that you know exactly where the original axial surface ends and we don't want you flowing a lot of wax beyond that point. Try to keep the wax contained in the work area. Do is we'll switch to our number seven spatula. And with this instrument, take larger increments of wax and begin to build the basic contours and then we'll start doing the refinements and final additions with the P.K. Thomas instrument again. So the first thing we need to do is just get enough wax built up here so that we have a normal contour and shape when we're done. Start thinking in terms of the normal contours of the wax 
and what you're trying to accomplish with your final product. So we need to start building up correct axial contours at this time, knowing that this will help us in determining our cusp positions. So you can see that basically all we're doing is exactly what we did with the initial exercise in establishing cusp cones, except now we're putting four of them on and we're establishing a basic position for the cusps. And again, the beauty of doing this in wax is later on, if you don't quite like where you end up with one, you can always change it quite easily. This is going to be the mesiolingual cusp, which is the largest cusp on this upper molar. And we're going to build this up a little bit bigger than the others. Okay, here's a model of the tooth that you're working on, slightly enlarged. You'll find that the basic features are the same on this as they are on your wax up. We have the cusp tips, the central pit, mesial and distal pit, the developmental grooves, central groove, and the supplemental grooves. Supplemental grooves, you'll note, always aim up towards your cusp tip. Note that the triangular ridges are indeed triangular with their bases down by the main grooves. And this series of triangles separated by grooves forms the normal undulation of your occlusal surface. While we're at it, let's take a look at it from a few different views. Note the smooth surface and the heights of contour. Let's do it from this side. Looks a little better over here. Also note that the height of contour is up here where your contact area will be. A, a common error that people make is that they try to make these teeth round, but I want you to look at it and realize that it really is essentially square. It certainly has some round features, but if you look, a molar is a square tooth. And if you keep that in mind when you're doing your wax up, you'll find the contours will fall into place much more nicely. And you'll get a better adaptation to adjacent teeth for your contact areas. Again, keep your references, know where you're going with this, and start to flow wax from your cusps into the occlusal surface. And remember from the model that what the uh, wax will come very close to duplicating the smooth lobes of the tooth if you warm it up enough. Remember that on an upper molar there's an oblique ridge and that's what I'm working on now. Establishing these two triangular ridges towards each other so that when the groove comes between them, the oblique ridge will be formed. Now we've got the four basic triangular ridges in place. And we're going to start to form some of the axial contours to start to bring this all together. The trick to this is to smoothly flow the cusp tip area down into the axial surface with the margin that you previously established with your very first additions of wax. Keep in mind desired axial contours by referencing to your models and your handout. And just very carefully flow this wax into position. We'll certainly be able to carve this a little bit later on, but you'll find that if you can control your wax and put it exactly where you want to have it, that you'll hardly ever be able to carve wax any smoother than a chilled surface 
after it's been flowed. This is also the time that you can use to begin to lay down the bulk of wax necessary to form an adequate marginal ridge on the mesial and the distal. Keeping in mind the basic shape is square, not round. And that this should all flow very smoothly together when you're done. Okay, now I'll take the instrument and just rewarm these areas just a little bit to reestablish the lobes again and flow that into the last addition that we've made. Take your inlay brush, if you use the white end, and get in there and just brush a little bit, you'll find that the wax will, at, will actually polish up as you remove these chips, and you get a nice, smooth surface to work with. Obviously, you don't want to overdo this either, especially if your wax is still a little bit warm, but that's the purpose of this end of the brush. Try to turn this here now so we can get a little better view. And that's pretty close to what we'd like you to have for this exercise. I want you to notice that the height of contour is up here in the contact areas on the mesial and the distal. That the surface is not flat. It is made up of convexities and concavities. You have your main lobe of your cusp, and you have some concavities as the cusp goes out. And if we look at it from this angle, you can see those concavities a little bit better. Again, notice it's not round. There are flat sides where the contact areas are. This surface is essentially flat except for the concavities. And if you want to call something round, I'll let you call that lingual cusp round. Okay, we're going to be doing a bulk addition here to get started. Again, we need to overheat the wax a little bit to get it to flow into the stone. And you may find this to be part of, probably one of the harder parts of this exercise because the wax always wants to flow down because of gravity. You want to try to keep it up to get the, your height of contours in the proper place. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with turning the card around to let gravity help you get the wax in the right spots. And one of the things that you can do is switch over to your other instrument for just a moment. And start to develop a point where you want that cusp tip to end up. Because that'll be a helpful reference as you do your bulk addition so you don't overdo it and you get wax in the right place. You can see we've extended that out and established the cusp tip, and now it's a simple matter of just filling that in. We have some basic bulk addition of wax, and you can see it's still rough. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it from the various angles. All we're trying to do is build back most of what has been removed, and now we're going to finalize this so that it looks like it should. One of the things that you should realize is that the marginal ridges right in here and here are going to end up being higher than the groove. They always are. We've cut that back. Avoid the tendency to just carve this flat with, with the groove because the marginal ridge needs some height in order to establish the correct contour and the correct proximal contacts. So once we have the height established level with what you have, we have to build from there by flowing wax 
establish the marginal ridges in their correct relationship relative to that central groove. We'll do that on both sides. You may not see this one quite as well as the one we just did. Now looking at your models and your samples, you'll also see that when you're looking from the buckle, you have to reach out and get these point angles established to establish that square surface out on this buckle surface here. Let's see if we can begin to show these corners starting to establish here. We obviously still need to smooth this all up. And that will require moving the cart around beyond the range of this camera. So I'm going to go away and finish this off camera so you can take a look at it. OK, we're back. Having smoothed this all out now, establishing the normal contours, I'm going to tip this up just a little bit so you can see the height of contours up in the contact areas. And you can see that the occlusal surface essentially is untouched. Don't worry if a little bit of wax flows over. You can carve it back, but a little bit of the color of the wax will stay. And that's not a big issue and we'll, you know, won't be graded down for it. Turn it around this way so you can see the normal contours from the various angles. I've done a sample card to completion to show you what your final assignment should look like when it's done. I have a couple of tips for you. I'd like you to get this assignment started as soon as possible so that you can show your instructor your progress and get some feedback and suggestions along the way. If the project is unacceptable, you will repeat it until it is acceptable so don't wait until the last minute to find out that there is a, a minor correction needed somewhere and remember you are developing skills that will help you become a successful practicing dentist don't get frustrated if you can't do this the first time I don't know anyone who could so put some time and effort into doing a nice job and it will pay back big dividends in the future You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.